Hello everyone, Mr. Doria from the lab scene here. Today I'll be covering Nearpod Basics Part 2. In Nearpod Basics 1, we went over how to create a Nearpod presentation from scratch. And today I'll be showing you how to facilitate that lesson to your students, along with showing you what your Nearpod presentation will look like in both the student and teacher view. If you like my lesson, please hit subscribe. And here we go. So just like you did uh, last week, You'll enter Nearpod through your district's virtual desktop or just through the Nearpod website. So these are just some other Nearpod activities I've been working on. So here we are. Last week, we had a lesson on cells. Let me zoom in for you. All right, that's our lesson we want to use today. Okay, so you'll have a couple of options here to give that lesson to your students. So you have two options. Let's say um, you want to give this as a homework assignment or maybe there's a test coming up and you want to just use this as a review, you could give the students a student paced Nearpod lesson. So that's one option that you could give um, your students so they could complete and engage their, with their work. So you click student paced. So we had, a, I, I gave this lesson out last week to one of my science students for practice, but you'll have a code from last week. So let's say you want to relaunch that code. You could revisit other Nearpod assignments. Just make sure that you keep the code in mind. So let's say you want your kids to come back to that lesson. You could give them that code, but we'll launch a new one. So launch new student paced lesson. Remember, student paced means the students are doing the Nearpod without your guidance. Well, maybe if you're in class with them, they'll be going through it at their own pace and then you could help them. But again, this is meant for homework or um, in class uh, practice where the student is guiding the lesson at their own pace. So when we click that, you'll get a new code. You could give this code to the students in class or you, you could even uh, assign this as homework. And here are all of your options. You could email them the code, post it to social media, provide them with a link. You could embed the link. Let's say you're um, a Google Suite school. You have Google Classroom available. You could send it through the Remind app, Microsoft Teams, like what my district uses. I like to click the link. And now I usually will copy and paste this link to my student's channel. Sometimes students have issues accessing the Nearpod lessons. So this is a way that I provide them with more accessibility. I'll just directly give them the link. I like to do that because it gives me a little more control of what I'm giving out to the kids. And then it, it, it helps that interaction be more solid because I could directly show my student, all right, here is where I put your link. Let's say you wanted to assign it. You click whatever option. So again, my district uses Microsoft Teams. I click Microsoft Teams. I'm prompted to log in to Teams. So now I could directly share this link to my student's channel or I could create an assignment. So sometimes students are absent, they're having issues access, accessing the assignment. I could share it directly to their channels that I made for them. Or I could create an assignment, choose which class I want it to go to, give it a title, some directions, assign points, and set a due date. So that's if I want to send it out to the whole class. But again, we want to use a, a uh, live participation. We want, I, want, I want to show you how to facilitate a Nearpod lesson. So we'll X this out. So now our other option is live participation. So what I do every day, I have my screen shared. So I have it all set up right before the kids enter class virtually. I'll, I'll, have, I'll click live participation. Now and the code's displayed. So here's the code. Now again, that, that accessibility that Nearpod has, you could provide the live participation code across all these platforms to send a link to remind whatever you need to do to get that code out so you could tell your kids all right nine o'clock i'll be sending the code out and then they could come to your class so this is the code here so now this is what you'll see when you go to live participation so now i want to show you what the students see and i'll i'll even log into a nearpod assignment so i can model some um, some ideas and the kids could see me in, interacting with them. So what I'll do is 
I'll go to joinnearpod.com. Here's joinnearpod.com. I'll open up another tab, and my screen will still be shared during my lesson. So they'll see me doing this. So this is just another way that I'm, I'm I'm with the students. They see that I'm part of the class with them, and it allows me to just you know just engage with them and participate. I'll even go into some of the uh, the games that Nearpod offers and and tell the kids I'm playing with them just so they can see that. You know, they say, oh, say I want to try to beat Mr. Doria. So that's another way that you could engage with your kids and actually act like you're in class with them, even though they're physically not with you. So then I'll enter the code. So I'll come here. You could copy and paste the code too if you have to type it. So when you get to joinnearpod.com, you'll be taken to this page. This is what the students see. So when you tell the kids to go to joinnearpod.com, or even if they just go to nearpod.com, there's always an option to enter the code. So they enter the code, code's right here. So again, here, see how the codes match up? Sometimes my students will say, I can't get in. Usually they messed up in putting one of these, these numbers or letters. But again, my screen shared. I'll even zoom in for the kids so they can see the code. Okay, so the code has to be right so they can enter your class. So then when you click join, this is what the students see. And now this is what the students see. Now if you notice, the students can't, they can't do anything. This is all they have. So again, this is the student view. When I go back, this is the teacher view. So then once you tell your class everyone's in, you would X this out, and now you would be able to see all your students logged in. And it's actually pretty cool because on the bottom of this, you would have a, um, it'll be another bar pops up. And then you could see every student that actually logged into the lesson. Okay, so this is me here. Now, if I click this one, I'll ask the kids, how was your weekend? How are you doing? Tell me a fact that you learned. So using the Draw It feature here, the kids could interact with this slide. So let's say they want to click a text box. I'll tell them, you know, how, how was your weekend? The weekend was great. And the kids could make the font bigger. They could change the colors. Okay, so that's an, another way that this is what they're seeing, another way that I could get them excited for the lesson. Okay. Let's say they want to add a picture. Some of the kids sent some. They sent some cool pic, uh, cool photos. They'll say, uh, they'll say, fun. And it's interesting to see what the kids, what the kids post. And you know, it starts discussion. Gets the kids excited for the day. Let's say the kids want to, want to write, uh, type, or I mean, sorry, they want to draw. I advise them not to use the pen because I find that it's a little hard you know, using a mouse to write. So I always tell them to use the text feature that they could write. Fun. Okay. So again, they're waiting for me. They're working here. And it's just a great icebreaker while they're waiting for the rest of their classmates to log in. And as they're working, you'll see them actually um, input what they're writing onto that slide. It's a good way to keep them motivated, and so you could see, um, you know, see them working. And it's also good for the students who maybe aren't aren't engaged with you. You could tell them, you know, hey, Mike, I don't see you writing on that slide. Can you please participate? And then it just keeps them on task and you know, holds them accountable to their work. So now again, teacher view, student view. The teacher, the student has to wait for you to move on. So then Nearpod has the arrow. You click the arrow. And now we're at the next slide. So this is a collaborate board. So I'll put a question here just to prompt the students thinking. Sometimes I use this as an exit ticket. I like to use the collaborate board just to prompt discussion. So it says here, would you like to approve student comments before they are posted? If you really know your students, I click no, and I let them post whatever they want. If you're concerned with that, you know, lay those rules, tell the students to act, act appropriate because everything they post, you'll see, and you could also delete it. But if you have to, um, 
approve them, click yes, and then it'll near will prompt you. But just for argument's sake, I will click no. So what do you know about cells? This is what the students see. So the students could write, I know that the cells work together. And for all my, um, my science educators in New York State, Great phrase to help your students on their Regents exams. I know that the cells work together to help maintain homeostasis. Great phrase for um, Regents exam responses if a student needs some test prep. That's another topic. So click that, the students click enter. And then I also tell my students to um, you know, interact with a picture. So you go to upload your images on the landscape um, icon, you click cells, and then you could get a really cool picture. You could also uh, type. Now, this is another good feature that I like. If you pick a photo, you could also share your thoughts. This is what a cell looks like. So now your student will have a picture and a nice statement. I like when my students do that just so I see both both ideas. So you, you'll get a post-it note with some with a sentence and the picture. And again, this is what you'll see as the teacher. Okay? So again, you could um, engage with the students here, answer questions, start discussion. And it's always great to see the students' thinking come to life. And again, they can't go anywhere until you move the slide. Okay? So now on this slide, I put a 3D model. Nearpod has some great near, uh, 3D models for the kids to engage with. So if I click here, again, I'm in student view. They could move this 3D model around and they could see different structures, right? So you could tell them, you know, zoom in. You could tell them zoom out. You could ask them what specific structures are. You could tell them what, you know, what is this? You could zoom in for the kids because, again, my screen is shared. And you could show, you could tell them what is this structure here? Okay, does anyone know what it does or what might it do? You could zoom in here. You know, you try to practice your own skills, trying to zoom in at the right spot. You could tell the students, what is this? So you could even tell your kids. Why would there be this structure right in the middle of the cell with some sort of channel? So you could ask them a lot of questions based on these pictures. And Nearpod has a lot of really great 3D models that you can use to engage with the students. So then if you click the arrow here, you can move on to the next slide. Now this would be something I would use for content. So a content slide, students can't interact with. So I said types of cells in the body. This is when I would give them some direct instruction talk to them for a couple of minutes, tell them what they're learning, some key features. So these are just different types of cells. Something like this, I would just, this is when I provide them with that direct instruction for maybe, maybe three to five minutes. Again, I like student-centered learning. So I, I want them to engage with Nearpod rather than just solely hearing me lecture for 45 minutes. So again, you know, quick guided practice, quick direct instruction, just so the students could could learn some key materials. And again, if you're teaching some sort of state assessment, this is where you could provide them with the objectives and content they need to know to uh, pass that state exam. And then I will move on. Again, another drawer slide here. So now this is a slide, um, this is a, just a blank slide for the students. So now I'll tell them, okay, everyone, let's label the cell. So then they have all these features here. Again, I, I really like when my students use the text box because it allows them to just have a nice, neat box to write in. So, you know, that's the nucleus, right? Okay, then they could even zoom in here. Now, you know, the, now this has a lot of lines. It, it all depends on how in-depth you're getting with your students in terms of... Um, how specific you want them to be, but again, you just this is a great opportunity to see what the kids know, 
and you could have them label this. If they want to use the pen, again, I find it difficult to write with the pen personally, but you can have them use that too. So we could go over here now. If you notice, this is my handwriting with the trackpad, and it's a little difficult for me. That's why I tell my students to use the text box. Some of the students are really good with writing with the pen. As you see the difference in handwriting, right? Text, text is typing and the writing. But again, give the kids some creative ability and then you could have them, have them label this however you need. And again, this is what you would see. This is, you could see your students working here. I use this as, a, as an opportunity to guide the students. So I'll tell them I could click on them and tell them, uh, you know, hey, great job. Looks like you're, uh, you, you clearly know where the nucleus is, but what do you think that blue, that blue dot is in the middle of the nucleus? So what's that, what's that uh, membrane on the outside of the nucleus? So, you know, consider what these three arrows could be. Again, just trying to have the students think a little more uh, deeply about the topic and you could provide them feedback right on the spot. And then next slide would be a rate your learning slide. So this is when lesson's over. I'll tell them how was your, you know, how did, what did you learn today? Can you is, have any issues with any topics? So over here, you could have your student, again, tell them to use that text, that text feature. Oh, doggies barking. The challenges of online learning. So you get your box, you could have them adjust it. And then you know, you'll see sometimes the students will write really, you know, I, I like when the students engage with me and write something very entertaining so we all have a, you know, good vibes in the classroom. So sometimes you'll see this, I know everything. Sometimes the students will write something like that and then you can tell them you, you can't know everything. Right, right, ask, ask a question and you know, guide them to be engaged the correct way. But you know, sometimes the kids write, write some great stuff. Could use it, upload an image. So have your students engage with how they rate, rate their learning. So then once they hit submit there, your answer has been submitted. So with this slide, you should tell your students, please hit submit so I know I know you're ready to move on. And then you'll see all the students rate their learning. Again, I was just one person. You could tell your students to write multiple ideas, write one, you know, one fact they're confused with, one fact that they know, something that they still need to learn. So again, this is another opportunity for engagement and have some fun with the kids during the, uh, during the lesson. So now once the lesson's completely over, I got to slide seven of seven. And now this is another way you could hold your students accountable. I tell the kids, all right, everyone, great, great job today. I am ending the session, but before I end the session, I will be clicking reports. And now it'll tell you where, if you have a district web, a district uh, Nearpod account, it'll send it directly. It'll send the report of this lesson directly to that email. I click OK, and it'll send the report there. So if a student didn't did not engage with you for the day, you tell them. I have, I have evidence that you didn't work, so please, we need to work better tomorrow. And again, it just is another way to hold the kids accountable while they're not with you in the classroom. But either way, let me show you where that is. So now lesson's over, I click end session. Yes. Now Nearpod will prompt you back to the home page. So now once you're back to your home page, you can click reports right here. So there's reports, you click reports. And now here's, it'll, the Nearpod report will always generate the most recent Nearpod lesson. Click the little plus icon. And now you have a session report of everything that the students worked on. If you click draw it, because I, you know, I love that draw it feature. Every slide where I told my students to engage with, you get a, a um, you get some evidence, right? So this was my slide here that I worked on. Here's the collaborate board. We'll make sure you close it. Here's the collaborate board. You could go to uh, class board for view, view only. 
Nearpod will take you to, uh, we'll open up another web page and you can see how all the kids did on the collaborate board here. You can X that out. I use this for uh, special ed, for our goal reporting and our, uh, our progress for our students. Click downloads and you'll get a complete session uh, PDF document of the entire lesson. So you could save it to your local, go local drive or your Google Drive if you have your Nearpod uh, connected to Google. And here is your PDF showing you all the evidence of your students working throughout the lesson. And again, uh, as a special ed teacher, we're always collecting um, your academic goals for, uh, to uh, determine our students' progress. And this is how I easily keep track of my students' progress in Nearpod. And it, it's been working all year for me. So again it's, an, again, it's another great way just to tell your kids, hey, you need to participate. You didn't participate today, and please participate tomorrow. So, again, this is just another way you could hold your students accountable so that they could engage with you while they're remote. I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. Please hit subscribe if you'd like to see more of my videos. Also, leave a comment. I'd love to get some inspiration for more tutorials and hear, um, hear how you're using Nearpod in your own classrooms. Again, Nearpod's a great tool because it allows us to connect with our kids, even though they're not, they're not physically with us due to the pandemic, or even if they're just not in school, we can still send them that lesson for the day and get them engaged using Nearpod. And hopefully we're all back in the school buildings very soon, just like we were before the pandemic, so we can interact with our kids and get them back to normal that much more quicker. Thank you.